So let's do, I want you to tell me what is the story associated with this position time graph? What are we doing from A to B? Show. What do you think from A to B? What's going on? Okay, good. So I'm starting off. If I were to draw some some little tangent lines in there, uh, would you agree that the tangent lines start off flat, which means a velocity of zero, and they end up pretty steep, which means it's going pretty fast, right? So we are accelerating up to some high speed. What about from B to C? Alexis, what's happening from B to C? Um, Decelerating. So now I'm going to go from that high speed back to what speed? What velocity? Zero. Zero. Okay. From C to D, what's happening there? From C to D, what do you think? Uh, Olivia, what do you think? C to D. Uh, is it decelerating? Okay, so it's, okay, decelerating is a tricky word. If decelerating means slowing down, it's not really decelerating. But what is it doing? Going slower. Uh, okay, well, it's, it's going zero right there. Yeah. So it's at rest. So what's it doing between there and there? The slope, look what the slope is doing. What, what kind oh, of slope it's is that? Negative. Ah, it's negative. So what direction is it traveling there? Backwards. It's picking up speed in the negative direction, isn't it? So it's accelerating in the negative direction up to some maximum speed in the negative direction. And then, Alyssa, what's going on from D to E? Uh, it's slowing down. Slowing down in the negative direction, coming to rest. And then finally, Deshaun, what's the last part doing here? So we're from rest, speeding up, the speeding up in the positive direction, up to some final high speed. OK, good. All right, so let's look at this now from a velocity perspective. We just drew a position time graph. Let's draw the corresponding velocity time graph. Okay, so so what are we going to do from A to B? So it starts with, a, what do you think, Elijah? It starts with a velocity zero, goes up to some high velocity. What's that going to look like? Straight line, slope, sloped upward. Yes. Okay. Good. So something like maybe like that. Okay. Uh, what about from B to C? What do you think from B to C, Nicole? Okay. You, I see your hands going like going like that, isn't it? Okay. Back to zero. Okay. Uh, TJ, next part from C to D. Sydney, what about from B to E? I don't know. Okay, sure. Okay. So why, when it's going negative, is it going in this direction instead of going this direction? Okay, because, because remember the relationship. The slope of a position time graph is the value of a velocity time graph, okay. right? So the slopes are getting, that's a pretty big negative slope, so the value is pretty big and negative. Oh, oh, okay. 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 So sure. then from G to E, then it's slowing down. Okay, to what value? Yeah, so like that, right? Good. Yeah. Okay. Oops. Like that. Okay, and then the last part, what do you think, Ezra? What's it doing from E to F? Yeah, so it's, well, continue, right? It's going to continue like that. Okay. Make sense? Okay. All right, so now what we want to do, let's take a look at something like this. We're going to look at a situation here where this is the story that we're going to tell in two graphs. Before we tell the story, 
Let's actually try to do some physics calculations here. Let's use our really limited kinematics toolbox here and come up with a total displacement for this trip. We want to know how far are we going to travel during this trip. Let's say we're starting off. I didn't say this, but let's say we're starting from an initial position of zero. Okay, the only equation that we have is this one, right? Position equals initial position plus velocity times time. Okay? There's another way to write this, though, that I want you to get used to. Uh, how do we define displacement? How far away you are from your Okay, how far you are away from your starting point. Okay, that's good. So, for example, if I start at negative one meters, let's say this is zero, and I walk four meters in this direction, so I end up at positive three meters. What's my displacement? Four meters. How do I get that from my starting point of negative one meter and my ending point of three meters? Yeah. So it's just final position minus initial position, right? So doesn't that look like this? Doesn't that just look like D minus D naught? Right? What's that equal to in this case? Well, okay, but in terms of my original equation. Okay, velocity times time. Good. So we might write that as delta D. That's our displacement, right? And it's just equal to B times T. Okay, so let's, let's calculate this then. What's going to be our displacement for the first step? We're traveling at a velocity of 2 meters per second for 6 seconds. 12. Okay, good. So for, for part 1, my... Displacement equals 12 meters. And really, we could almost look at this then as my final position is just my initial position plus my displacement, right? Does that make sense? So we end up then at the end of section one, you know, part one of our journey, we'll call it D1, how about? D1 is 12 meters. We started at zero and we had a, we experienced a displacement of 12 meters. Okay, part two. We are at rest for four seconds. What's my displacement? Zero. Zero. Okay, good. So part two, delta T is zero meters. And so at the end of segment two, of, of part two of our journey, what's my total distance traveled or total displacement? 12 meters. We didn't change at all. Part three, we're going to travel with a velocity of one meter per second for three seconds. What's my displacement for part three? Three meters, okay. And at the end of part three, my position is what? Fifteen then, right? It's going to be my twelve plus my, my three meters of displacement. So we get fifteen meters. And then last but not least, what's my displacement for part four of the journey? Velocity of negative one meter per second for four seconds. Negative four. And so my final position then at the end of the whole journey is what? 11. 11. So 15 plus my additional displacement of negative 4 leaves me with 11 meters, right? Make sense? Okay, so let's turn this into a position time graph and a velocity time. How many seconds do I travel total? About 17? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not going to work, is it?
Here's position, here's time. Let's color code. This first one will be red. So what's that look like? So what's my slope going to be for the first part? Two, two isn't it? Right? Because the velocity is two. The velocity is the slope of a position time graph. The other way I could look at it is I know I'm starting off with a position of zero. And after six seconds, so one, two, three, four, five, six, my position should be positive 12. Right? So I'm going up to there's 15, 14, 13, 12. So right about there. Make sense? Okay, so that, everybody agree that's the red, the first part of the journey in red? Okay, second leg. So I'm going from the point, and maybe we can put some coordinates up here, that's 6, 12. What do I do? Ah, okay, I've seen this, good. So we're going to go straight across for four seconds. So one, two, three, four, so right about there. Okay? Now what? Looks like I'm going to velocity one second for three seconds. Total displacement of three, right? So that's going to be blue. So doesn't that mean I'm going to go over one, two, three, and up, up how many? Uh, three. So up to there. And that, that's going to be the point. What do we got there? Um, 13, 15. Right? And then the last one, I've got a slope of what? Negative 1, because that's my velocity for 4 seconds. So I'm going to go over 4 and down 4. So I go, let's see, over 4 down to about there, like so. And my ending point then is at t equals 17, d equals 11. Right? Make sense? Okay. Let's draw the corresponding velocity time graph. Easier to draw, isn't it? What's the red section going to look like? What's that going to look like? I'm graphing velocity as a function of time. What's the velocity during the red first leg? Constant. It has a value of two. So it just looks like this thing, doesn't it? Green section? Zero. Zero. Okay. Oops. That lasts four seconds. Right there. Physics types, we probably technically want to put open circles around those, right? <coughs> but we get the idea. Okay, next part. I mean, calculus people, not physics people. Physics people, we'll worry about. Calculus people. Why are we putting open circles? Okay, but what about the shape of that? Sharp corners. Sharp corners. There we go. Yeah, grivets don't exist. Good. Okay, what about the blue part then? Positive one. Okay, for three seconds. So it's going to look like one, two, three. And then the orange part? Negative one, so we got to go below. Yeah, so right there, right? For four seconds. So there we go. Okay, good. Okay, we'll come back to this. Let's go over here, this guy. Let's not even bother with the position time graph with this one. We did it last period, and it's kind of hard to draw. It's, you know, I mean, we could do it. It's going to be real curvy. But we'll just do maybe the first two legs of it, and then after that, we'll, we'll give up. 
But let's go ahead and try to calculate displacement. Now, we have to cheat a little bit with this. We're going to have to be tricky with it because we don't have it very shortly. By the end of Chapter 5, we'll have a bunch of much better, more powerful kinematics equations that involve acceleration. Uh, but we don't right now. Right now, we've only got one. And it doesn't really work here because we're accelerating. But we did a little trick earlier in the year. Remember, we actually did a tiny bit of this stuff at the beginning of the year as kind of an introduction. And we said that the total displacement is equal to average velocity times time, right? So even though we're not given an average velocity directly, we could easily calculate it. If we're uniformly accelerating from 0 meters per second to 2 meters per second, then during that time, what is my average velocity? 1. Just the average of 0 and 2, right? So we could say, for this first part, let's add a little bit of information. So V bar, which is V average, bar means average, is positive 1 meter per second. And we said that total displacement is just average velocity times time. So what's our time? Six seconds, good. So then we end up with displacement is just one meter per second times six seconds, which is a total of what? Six meters? The seconds would cancel, and I would just get six meters. Good. Okay, part two we can do. Part two is constant velocity, right? So we said on the previous page, didn't we, that displacement just equals velocity times time, right? So then what's the velocity, or what's the displacement for part two? Yeah, two meters per second times three seconds gives us another six meters. Everybody agree? Okay. Part three, decelerate from two meters per second to rest. Well, what's rest? Zero. So we are slowing down. Uh, what's my average velocity during that interval? The average of positive two and zero would be positive one. Okay, so for part three, V bar is actually positive one meter per second. So displacement is going to be V bar, meaning V average, times time, which is one second. Oops, which is just one, isn't it? One meter. Okay. Now, four is a little weird. Now we're going from rest to negative two meters per second. What's the average of zero and negative two? Negative one. So here we really do have a negative one meter per second average velocity. So our displacement then is going to be average velocity of negative 1 meter per second times how many seconds? 2, Two which gives me Three. negative 2 meters. Very good. Okay, so let's quickly, let's do, let me make this a little smaller. We'll just draw maybe just the very first part of this. So, what's that going to look like if we do position time? So for the first part, uh, we're going to uniformly accelerate from 0 to 2 meters per second. What's that going to look like, acceleration? What's in general, what's the shape of the curve going to be for accelerating? Okay, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing that kind of stuff, right? 
So the slope's going to get steeper. To cheat a little bit on this one, why don't we just connect the dots with, it, with that kind of a curve? So we're going to start off with a position of zero, because that's position versus time. And after six seconds, we've increased our position by six meters. So we're going to go over six, three, four, five, six, and up right there, right? And we got to make it look kind of like that, right? Does that make sense? For part two, Let's sort of color code these. This will be blue. Part two will be red. We're going to maintain a constant velocity of two meters per second for three seconds. So if I go over one, two, three, I got to go up six more, right? That's my displacement. So I'm going to go up to so through there ish. It's great. Make sense? Constant velocity, constant slope. And then if we just kind of try, I guess we keep going here. We'll just be qualitative with this. So then if we're going to decelerate from two meters per second to rest in one second, doesn't that mean I'm just kind of doing that? Agreed? Going from a slope of two to a slope of zero. So that's green. And then orange at the end. Might as well finish it. If I'm going to go from zero to negative two in two seconds, then doesn't that mean I'm just doing something kind of like that? I'm going from zero, increasing my slope in a negative direction to negative two. Okay, kind of hard to draw. But what we really want to do here is we want to look at the velocity time graph. So let's look at that one instead. I'll make that one a little bigger. is T and V. It's probably far enough. Okay, so what's the blue part going to look like? It's kind of small to read. We have a, we have a, we're going from zero to two meters per second in six seconds. So say it again. So it's going to be a positive slope, <coughs> constant, a straight line, right? So we're going from velocity of zero to a velocity of two in six seconds. So it's going to be, does everybody agree it looks like that? Right? The velocity goes from zero up to two in six seconds. Okay? The red part, we're going to maintain a constant velocity of two meters per second for three seconds. Okay, good. I'm seeing this kind of thing, right? So it's going to have a constant velocity. It's going to look like that, right? Oh, oh but that's, that's supposed to be straight. That doesn't look very straight. So if it's a constant velocity, it's a horizontal line. Yep. And okay. a velocity time graph, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Right? Okay. Now we're going to decelerate. So we're slowing down. And in this case, it really does mean negative acceleration, doesn't it? We're going to go from two meters per second to zero in two seconds, right? Is that right? Well, in one second. So does that just look like that? Yeah. And then finally, orange, we're going from zero to negative two in two seconds. So I'm going to go from there over two seconds and down to like that, like that. Uh, okay, so let's add up our total displacement. I don't think we ever did that. So what's our total displacement going to be? We had a displacement of 6, and 6 is 12, plus 1 more is 13, plus negative 2. So my total displacement equals, what do we say, 11 meters? Here's the connection I'd like you to make. We said earlier that the slope of a, of a position time graph equals instantaneous velocity, right? And that's important. 
I want to see if you can take the velocity time graph, we'll look at both of these, and see if you can connect the graph that we created to our answer for total displacement. Probably easier maybe to look at this one first. So how are we going to get an answer of 11 out of that graph, out of the velocity time graph? Could you get an answer of the displacement for the first part of our journey is 12 meters? Okay, so what's that give you? Okay, so what about, so look at the red part of our graph here. You're onto something there, you're very close. So what about that red graph? Okay, so yeah, so two so like two sixes or second, six twos. Travel two meters. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, so so what about this then? What what can you tell me? What what's the height of that section? Two, right? And, and specifically it's two seconds. Or two meters per second, right? What's the width? So what about that screen of twelve? Area does, doesn't it? Right? about that. Now what kind of area am I going to get if I multiply 2 meters per second is my width and my length is 6 seconds? 12 what? Meters. meters. How about that? So the area of this part right here is 12 meters. Interesting. What's the area of the green part? Zero, right? So the green one, zero meters. What about the blue rectangle that we've created? And notice that the rectangles are being created by the, the curve and the t-axis, right? Okay. What's the height of this one? One meter per second, right? Times three seconds is three meters. Huh, that sounds familiar to me. Three meters, oh no, huh. Hmm. What about the orange one now? This is a little tricky. This is a little tricky now. This time, we have to, we have to define something. We're going to talk a lot about this in calculus. Half of the year in calculus, we will spend doing nothing but adding up areas under curves. That's what integration does for us. It seems like a weird thing to do, but it's very important. <clears throat> Here's exhibit A for why it's so important. Areas under curves seem to have some meaning sometimes. What do you think the area under this curve is? What's the height of that curve? It's negative one because it's below the t-axis. It's negative, below the horizontal axis. So it's got a height of negative one meter per second and a width of four seconds. So what would we associate with the area of that then? Negative four meters. Huh, that's interesting. How about that? So if I add up all the areas, 12 plus 3 is 15, minus 4 is 11. Hmm, how about that? Let's take a look here at this. Let's see if that works here. So let's look at the blue section. Now the blue section on our velocity time graph makes a triangle, right? Okay, so what's the height of that triangle? 2, Two meters per second, right, times six seconds. So what's the area of a triangle with a base of six and a height of two? One half base times height, right? So six. Everybody agree? Six meters. Huh. Hmm. Okay, what about the red part? Well, that makes a rectangle. Height of two, width of three, I think. So that's six positive six meters. And what about the green part? It's got a width of one and a height of or a base of base of one and a height of two. So what's the area? One. One. Positive one. 
And now remember, this one I've got, I'm finding the area between the function and the horizontal axis. So this is going to create a triangle with a height of negative 2, because it's below, and a width of, so what's the area? Negative, we'll talk half of that, right? Half of base times height, so negative 2 meters. Well, what do you know? That works, doesn't it? 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 1 is 13, minus 2 is 11. How about that? So what does that tell us? That tells us something really cool. The area under a velocity time graph is equivalent to total displacement. How about that? Yeah. Okay, so, so then you tell me here. Oh, real quick, one other thing, though, that there's, that's really interesting about this. So let's focus on just the first part of our journey. We had to do something a little tricky there, right? We had to say, we don't really have an equation for acceleration. So instead, we're going to take advantage of the fact that total displacement during that interval, we know from before, is equal to average velocity times time. OK, what are we doing to the shape of that graph if we trade accelerated motion for uniform motion at average velocity? Now think about this. So. We said the average velocity was positive 1. The time interval is still 6, right? So doesn't that just look like, like that rectangle? Can you see there geometrically that the dark blue triangle and the light blue rectangle have the same area? You get that? Look at what happens. If I take this, if I take this little section right here, and I flip it around, doesn't it just fit right in there? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Look what we did. When we define an average velocity for any motion, really all we're doing is we're just taking the complicated motion and we're trading all that area for a nice, simple rectangle. Isn't that interesting? That you can visually see? I mean, isn't that, that just, that's really cool that you can represent it that way. Right? Huh. So... So how about this then? What if we've got Okay, real quick, I want you to do some really fast adding here. Some really complicated stuff. I didn't want to do it that way. Let's do this. Let's go. Let's go like this. What's the total displacement if this is a velocity time graph? Let's assume that I drew this all uniformly. Zero. Yeah. Because whatever this area is, let's just call it positive A. What's that area? That's zero. So then we'll do, uh, I think I did say that tomorrow, so we'll, we'll take the first 10 minutes of class, go through the last assignment, so finish that up, the first assignment from chapter 5, go through that as a group, then we'll head over to the lab and start playing, okay? Sound good?